might be a little bit questionable. I'm like, Excellent. we'll draw it. There were some questionable it made, things. It made no sense why that was why that was a <laughs> card. Uh, it was a simpler time. It was a simpler time. Yeah. Which we could go back. That pre-9-11. <laughs> just, just a simpler time. Oh, uh, are we live? Is this real? Over here? All right. Well, hey. We're on the internet. Welcome. We are on the information highway. Highway to the danger zone. I want to say <laughs> <Kenny Watson's just> like, <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to another TFP live stream. Someone told me last week was it our fiftieth? That's been on it's Spotify. Our, it was our fiftieth Spotify episode. That's so like a year, yeah, right? Which is a little bit more than a year because we skip a couple. It doesn't times. feel like a year's worth of Spotify, but that's pretty. Well, he might have been back, pretty good. He could have backlogged and put some stuff up. We've been yeah. pretty good lately. We haven't skipped. I feel like in a while. No, and we only skipped because I think like two of us were sick or something. Because like we wanted so. to. <laughs> Let's be real. We would oh them. my gosh! If anybody's even watching this, because Facebook's been, true, yeah, then just Facebook giving it to us. Facebook's been throttling a lot of people. Nice. Ben's holding up figures. I can't count. <laughs> when he takes his shoes off, that's what we're. No. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we yeah, a Meta, Meta. Is it Meta? Meta, right? They've been. For those uh, know it's Meta, but <laughs> Meta. They've been <laughs> readjusting their whatevers. I have no idea, but. Yeah, we they've been, they've we went from back. like, I, I I would say we're down to like ten percent of our normal mm. like when we post something and we get an amount of traction like we're at ten percent of that. They've normal. gone back over a year. Like, crazy, dude! Crazy, yeah. Stuff. Post we're getting flagged for, yeah, and it's it's malarkey. It's what it is because we're following their rules. Like they say, you got to be a brick and mortar mm -hmm. store, and like we we are a I'll brick and mortar store. Like Beyond Driven Fitness and Performance. <laughs> if you want to become a brick, in Leroy, New York, yourself. if you want to get strong like a brick and mortar store, you want to get strong. Beyond Driven Fitness yeah, and good. Performance on good. Main Street in Leroy. Yeah. Is your place. Hell Best yeah. gym in Genesee County. I think probably mm -hmm. significantly you could expand that scope outward. But, well, um, and like it's a fact. Because they were voted number one gym. Yeah, that's correct. In Genesee County. The, be, the beyond portion means you can get past just their yeah. county and vote. For sure. There's going to be like a Space Jam type international, well, intergalactical issue. Because like another competing gym is going to like come in. Like we heard on the TFP live stream that you're the best gym a long time in the galaxy. galaxy far, far away. <laughs> other, other gyms don't want that. They're all going to look like Johnny Bravo. They're all going to look like Johnny Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Good job. So in case that happens, stash a firearm away. Mm -hmm. And if you want to preserve a firearm, what's the best way to do it? The best way to do it would be API. <laughs> Just Arts Preservation Inc. For those that don't know, they're fresh to this. And we thank you for coming in and watching the show for the first time, wondering what the hell we're talking about. Um, we have some really, really We're talking about vapor corrosion inhibiting true. technology true. and micro environments. Micro environments. To store all of your firearms, your ammunition, your valuables, right? Mm -hmm. In proven technology. FDA certified. I product. the fireball you're drinking. I poured in an API bag last week, and it's been sitting underground in the micro and, environment. Yeah, I dug it up just now. now it doesn't it's, it's good? I would never know. Anything's <laughs> turned to inferno ball now. No more fire. And we at the fire oh pit want the fire. <laughs> good ass. I, good I, ass. It's you got to do this before you start drinking. But should we pour one out for for Gaston? We we should or we should we not pour take, it up in the take the, my hat off in yeah. the rental. <laughs> it's gonna smell like fireball up in here. Don't do that. If uh, if you if you haven't heard, Gaston, Mr. Glock himself, no, no longer with us. Yeah, passed away yesterday. Right, ninety four years old. Ninety four. That's Gre a good greener horse pastures. He's moved on to. Ooh. Yeah, to bring horses up. Yeah. That's a well, that's a deep cut. Not everybody's gonna get the reference the there. Uh, will, Glock I, makes other products besides polymer handguns. If you pay attention, if you know. pay attention to our episode five episodes ago, <laughs> we talked about the elusive Glock. Yes, they make their full service provider. I don't see Sig making that. <laughs> Sig does not make that. No, they don't. Now they have a the chance. But yeah, Glock. And it is horse cum. Yes. But yes. <laughs> We also, well, that's what I'd like to like. Who get who inherits that empire? Is that who cares? The gun thing cares. His very close in age wife. <laughs> uh, 
There's not How much of an age Joe? gap there, right? 45? And he, he was 94? 94, yes. When did that, how long were they married? Was it like, I don't know, that was it like a week? This is his so, second marriage. I mean, it's his second marriage because he's got... The difference in age... It's 45, 49. Is years, the same or bigger? It's close to, like, his first wife, he was married to her for like 40-some years or whatever. Like, current, yeah. yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah that yeah. that's like in creepy. How old? She's yeah, married. yeah. How how old are his children? They've got to be. He's got one you can't one. have a wife younger than your kids. I mean, I mean you say. Well, that. I mean, he did, but you should. <laughs> you <laughs> say that you can't. I guess, but apparently you can. In Austria, his daughter's his daughter has to be probably older than his wife because if he was married to his wife for the same amount of time as his current wife, wouldn't that at least be good? Do you think she did the thing like in Indiana Jones, <laughs> like right before he died, his wife just comes in and she goes, this is how we say goodbye in Austria. She kisses him. The, the guy comes in and punches him in the face. I no, I don't think go that with no. where he ages rapidly. Ah, okay, yeah. Maybe that's what happened. But he's already aged so much and he just went straight to skeleton. <laughs> Somebody tricked him and he picked up a non-Glock handgun and he just instantly, <laughs> yeah, like... Picture the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gaston no longer with us. Very sad. Probably the greatest handgun pioneer. Incredible. Yeah. Really, especially for like the modern. I mean, I know everybody, I don't want to say they shit on Glock now, but, you know, the handgun market wouldn't be what it is Everything, without their innovation. I would say that everything innovative that has happened in handgun technology since 1979 mm -hmm. has all been built on the back of Glock. Mm -hmm. If everyone's been trying to chase that high, that Glock started. Glock perfection. Yeah. So. Pour one out. Spill. For the homies. <laughs> yeah, where's Ty? No Ty this week. Mm -hmm. It's all right. Whatever. Something about making his wife happy and Christmas and stuff like that. Boring. Lame. <laughs> no. Did you guys have a good Christmas? Christmas was really good, man. We got to uh, spend some time with all of the boys together. And we got to spend some time with uh, the grandbaby, which is always a good time. And, uh, yeah, I forgot to see the fam. And we had some good food. Did awesome. the dogs get in the tree like a cat? We don't. Dude, we don't even put up a tree anymore. Unfortunately, like, did we – sometime around – the second dog, I think. We just kind of, I mean, April once in a while, like every couple years, she'll get yeah. in the mood and she'll just decide she wants like, one to yeah. have one. But, then, but it's just not worth the energy expenditure. They don't really cause any issues, but it takes up a lot of space. And sure. And a lot yeah, of time. Yeah. And putting it up and taking it to work, we don't care. Our kids are grown, <laughs> man. Right. Yeah. I'm at the opposite end of that spectrum. My kids are little, like, so we're doing the whole, I did like the the sugar around like my my yeah. shoe right make it look like right. Santa had like come in and yeah we had the whole it was fun no that's all that's yeah. like yeah no but it is it's when a, your kids are little it's really fun make my fun. wife does it all so like yeah. right yeah no, it's <laughs> make the easy for us yeah you got to you got to what about you was you good Christmas Christmas is great family's getting bigger good. so that's cool yeah so siblings getting married. And Stuff. Yeah, it's a fun a nice first win. year. I got to have Christmas with my grandmother. And God, probably well over a decade, so that's cool. She that's lives, dope. She man. lives yeah. middle of the country. She right. made the trip up. She made the trip up. Yep. Nice. Yeah, she's gonna be here for a couple months. So that's pretty cool. She's doing joint family, so she's staying different months here and there with just like couch others. surfing kind of. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty sweet on her. Yeah, yeah. No, that's awesome, yeah, yeah. man. Good. That's yeah. We get to see her. So en sweet. Enjoy that. Uh, John says, "Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, boys." He heard that Gaston died at seven forty-three p.m. So in his honor, we should all shoot our Glock simultaneously. In about what is that? Like ten minutes? Well, I'll just yeah. sit here and have a desk pop <laughs> <laughs> on the stream. Do you need a skylight? Is a Shadow Systems a Glock? I mean, no. Yeah, yes. I don't. Yes, it is technically everything internal, right? Like all the parts are interchangeable. There's no, there's no real difference other than branding and like the. Like is Glock going to is, is Glock going to become 
1911. Like, like it's just where it's a, like, yeah. I think I think a catch all I think term. we're past. I think we're past that with yeah. like Lone Wolf and all the stuff that they're doing yeah. with frames and stuff and shadow systems, and then all the different custom slides that you can get. Mm -hmm. There's so many different match grade mm -hmm. barrels and trigger assemblies, and there's titanium pit right. Like when I was at the Glock Armors course, um, and this was even a few years ago, um, but they were talking then about how like. You could have a Glock that's a Glock frame, but not one of the other parts on the gun is like a Glock OEM part, right? So the ship of Glockius. Exactly. Yeah, you could just take <laughs> all of these different parts from any number of manufacturers, and theoretically they'll all go together and they'll all work, right? So, I mean, no, I don't. Or I mean, yes, I think we're like past that point where like yeah. Glock is now like. It's like saying Band-Aid or aspirin. You know what I mean? Sure. Like it's just right. like, it's a term yeah, yeah, for yeah. any number of different, which is... I think that's fun. It's cool, but it's kind of unfortunate, too, for, like, the... Yeah. I, I don't know. Is it... Un, I don't know. It, I, I think about it in both ways. Because uh, I think it kind of dilutes what a what we think of as, like, the Glock itself. Sure. But I think in another way, it elevates it, right? Because mm -hmm. it puts it puts it in, like, an AR type of category where it's, like... Similar, Everybody yeah. is, like, imitating right. it, right? And, like, so... I don't know. It's an interesting, it's an interesting topic. I think it's sweet. I, I think it's What's just, your favorite clock copy? Obviously the Sigma, right? I'd say that's definitely number one. I just saw the vein in your number, head. Like, it's like, <laughs> you know, just like, how do I? The no, original I, Glock copy. Yeah. The one that got sued. The OG. I would say Shadow Systems is definitely for now. Yeah. I think I appreciate shadow systems the most out of everyone else because the one thing that made it a shadow systems is the frame all the other frames are very glock ish but shadow systems with their back strap that allows you to not have that everyone says the glock angle it allows you to have a 1911 grip or a smith grip and they understood the different um i don't know i guess degrees that you would have of your different grips where if you're used to a SIG, a Smith, what have you, and you want to get into a Glock, but everyone's like, oh, your hand is going to be different. Shadow Systems knew that, and their engineers knew that, mm -hmm. and they gave you back straps that changed that angle without having to change the entire yeah. low, which I think is incredible. Yeah. Sa same thing with agency, or no, Zeb. Zeb, where you get, now Zeb took the SIG idea with that fire control unit, and you can get different grips for it, and they're coming out with different it's pretty sweet. as well. So. Yeah, you know what's interesting about that is uh, before I got my Shadow Systems DR920, mm -hmm. which is a gun that I use for like mm -hmm. tactical games and USPSA and stuff like that. Um, before I got my competition gun, I got my carry gun, my MR920, which is mm -hmm. also a Shadow Systems. And at the time, I was using a SIG P320 VTAC for like competition so i did Sweet like God. one i did like one tactical game for that or like mm -hmm. one uspsa maybe or one of each you know whatever i had it for a pretty limited period of time um but while i was using the sig i actually changed out the back strap in the mr920 because i was coming from shooting mostly glocks right mm. so most of the guns that i was shooting before um the the shadow systems pistols were like my glock 19 or like uh i had a gen 5 like a g45 a glock 45 and i was using those a lot and then when i switched out the back strap to the mr920 for like the sig back strap it really did change the way that i shot that gun compared to my mm -hmm. 19 and then i ended up changing out the back strap on the dr920 as well to the sig back strap because with the Glock back strap, the way that the grip angle is, I have to use a really positive grip angle, right? I have to put a lot of emphasis on breaking the wrist mm -hmm. to get the front sight to come down because the gun naturally wants to point high in your hand. And it was made specifically for that style of shooting where you're going to have like a more positive grip angle. But a lot of people didn't get that. So that's why Glock actually had like a, a shooting mm. school, mm. right? To actually teach people how to shoot Glocks because they were using a, a completely different 
grip angle than what you would use on like a 1911. A lot of people didn't realize why the gun would point so high. So it's what would cause people to want to like duck their head down mm. to try and like look up at the gun sight. The problem is when you start moving your head and the gun at the same time, now we got two things moving instead of just one. Right. right. So it becomes a lot more diff difficult to intersect those two things, meaning the eye line and the plane of the sights at the same point every time and get consistent yeah. results. So it makes a lot more sense if you just change the grip angle or like the angle of your shooting grip or change the angle of the back strap to fit the style of grip that you're used to, mm -hmm. right? So having the M&P or 1911 style grip, if you're used to having that neutral grip, right, that's one thing. If you're used to shooting like a SIG, where you're going to have a slightly more positive grip angle that's slightly different, but if you're used to shooting a Glock, where you're really focused on bringing that front sight down into that notch, mm -hmm. then you're going to have a much more like positive grip angle, right? Or like you said, you can change up the back strap and now it makes the gun a little bit more intuitive for everybody. Right. It is crazy how such a small, relatively minor nuanced thing can make a big difference. Yeah. Well, it, the devil is in the details, right? Mm -hmm. And like a lot mm -hmm. of people don't realize with, with, firearms they're all designed specifically to to so that they are supposed to conform to your biomechanics right so the the people that design handguns they understand how the handgun works relative to how your body works right but we as end users have a tendency to try and figure out some problem that doesn't exist by yeah we like bring our head down yeah. to like right or if we're cross-eye dominant we got to close one eye sure or like we sure. bring the gun yeah. i was shooting i was in a private lesson with a guy night before last and he's cross-eye dominant and i could tell right away that he's cross-eye dominant because he's doing the thing that everybody who's cross-eye dominant does they're holding the gun in their right hand and they're aligning the gun with their left eye so he's holding the gun totally on the wrong side of his yeah, body yeah which is right. going to completely change how the recoil interacts, right? Or, yeah, you're going to have to change the angle of your head relative to the gun, right? So what I tell people to do, and Joe, you're probably cross-eye dominant as well, being a left-handed shooter, right? You're probably right-eye dominant. Actually, both. Okay. So like I come when I come out. Well, I so yeah, you've learned, you've trained yourself that. over time with dots to just keep both eyes open, and so you know where you need to be looking kind yeah, of. Same with, with archery, like I can right-hand, left-hand, it doesn't really make a difference right but being left-handed adapt and overcome right except for scissors <laughs> fuck those fucking scissors, scissors. Fuck scissors. <laughs> that's i can't great. win with scissors it's great uh devin says he he's 100 percent gonna buy no, he's just like, i'm thinking about buying the shadow systems mr 920 elite uh he's just heard us <laughs> talk so many great things about them They're it's sweet, a man. very it's a very cool guy if you're i mean if you're like sold on the glock system as far mm -hmm. as like the safe action trigger mm -hmm. and the magazines which are readily available and very reliable and, mm -hmm. and you know can be had from from multiple different sources um yeah if you like glocks in general i think the the mr920 has a lot to offer absolutely absolutely uh so we've got a lot going on it's been a busy week down here at right. the firing pin a lot of construction still going on yep. with the weather yep construction still going now we've been so lucky with the weather right like, oh it's been amazing and uh, yeah, so foundations are moving along. We've got, uh, I posted a little bit on Facebook about it. There's technically two buildings that are going to be built. Right. They're connected. They're going to be one big building when it's done. Uh, but like structurally, there are two they're like independent. independent structures. Yeah, that are just conjoined. And so building B, which is the range building, is the one they're working on right now at our request so that when they finish that building or get it done enough where we can then start working on the range we can go in there start building the backstop which that's going to take us a few weeks to weld the frame and the structure and then put the ar500 steel on top of that and then we cover that with the rubber right uh and then we've got to hang the baffles in the ceiling so that'll be a lot of fun hanging their like 250 pound sheets of armored steel right so that'll be fun to hang piece those of, piece of cake. yeah piece of cake um and then yeah we got to do the track system the tar you know the target system that goes back and forth and then we'll do the booths kind of towards the end but hopefully the way we've got it figured 
is by the time we're done building out the range, they'll be done with building A, which is the retail building. So hopefully by that June timeframe, we can open up uh, and it'll be a lot like when we first opened for those of you that have been around with us since 2014. Uh, when we first opened, we had two of the lanes working and we, for some reason, started on um, all the way to the right. And that's why way back they were numbered like backwards. One was all the way to the right and seven was all the way to the left because uh, one and two were just, that was the first two we worked on. So that's where we started. And out in the front, we had nothing. We had like four or five guns up on the rack. We had no aisles, no nothing. Like it was just, here we are. So it will be very similar. June, come June, uh, might be like a folding table out in just an empty room, but the range will be going. I think that's the important thing. And yeah, that'll be, that'll be fun. So it's, it's slow, steady steps. They're working on the foundations now. And I think they'll be done with building B's foundations, you know, early next week they'll be potentially starting to set some steel like later next week or the week after. Cool. So yeah, That's very cool. exciting. Very exciting. I know we've all been waiting. Um, I know the guys are just all over. Not, not, that sounds weird if I say all over each other, but oh, tripping all over each other. Yeah, oh, in, they are. In the <laughs> well, Tyler's not here this week, so it's been <laughs> a little a lot less, less touchy. Yeah, a lot less way. touchy. <laughs> But it'll be nice to be out of that garage, back into a full shop again. Um, I need to do, we need to do like a full video where we can like upload it like separately maybe. Mm -hmm. And we can like go over the plans, like the detailed like drawings and stuff. Um, I haven't really even had a chance to show you uh, a really good Yeah, we got to like, sit down. And... Where I can show you everything we're doing. I'm excited, um, man. I can't wait. The, the big thing that I'm really excited about uh, is the building's going to be two stories, right? And so upstairs, we've got room. We've got a 1,500 square foot classroom space. So whether that's divided up so that we can have two different classes running, you know, like simultaneously on a weekend, or, I mean, we're going to have room to have, like, events over here. If you want to have a, you know, birthday party, or if you want to have some type of larger event, we're going to have that space. Uh, so I'm just really excited to, to become more of, you know, not that we weren't already, but we're going to be like a proper home for all stuff. Second Amendment. It's going to be fun. It's it is fun. very exciting. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think training uh, is really the key moving forward. You know, the state makes it harder and harder and harder for the majority of people to exercise their Second Amendment rights. But I think, you know, if you're willing to go through all those hoops, you're serious about it. So I want to cater to you know, the serious people that want to take training. I want to be able to have, um, you know, we've been talking about the 10 lane extra range. You know, we've, we've got the seven lane original range. We've got room to add on another 10 lane range, but I'm, I'm hesitant to, to really commit to that. Uh, there's maybe other potential things we could do. I was talking to you about maybe a small like shoot house area where you could set up like rooms and hallways something and, a little and, bit more yeah dynamic to do you know training that people want to do um, there is a lot of there is a lot of desire out there for more types of training like that and you see it all over the internet and mm -hmm. stuff like that and I, you were talking about that before the stream about some internet yeah. once you go into that well so yeah with the training stuff guys there's a lot of different information out there and some of it's really good and some of it's really bad, and there's a lot of, um, I don't know, there's a lot of different ideas about what people should be doing in terms of training, and some of it involves, like, a lot of dry fire training and a lot of development of, like, fundamentals and hard skills. Some mm -hmm. of it involves, like, more competition shooting, like you guys were talking to Matt Wolf, and, like, he has, you know, a lot of really great information, uh, and he's made a lot of strides in his own training mm -hmm. through dry fire, but also through going and competing in, different matches and really immersing himself in mm -hmm. practical shooting mm -hmm. in that way, which is feasible for some people and not as feasible for others. And yeah, there's the opportunity to do different like tactical types of training events and different stuff like that. We all have different ideas about ways that we'd like to incorporate more of that. And I think it's important to have a progression and have a build up to what you're doing and have like specified goals that you can kind of 
measure, right? And, and sure. see if you're progressing along the way to developing proper skills, yes, but also attitudes and mindsets and knowledge bases and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know, like I hesitate in a lot of ways to get too far into some of the like tactical for lack of a better term training because so many people want to go right into that training yeah and so much of it can become like when you get some munitions involved or you get paintball involved or you mm -hmm. get airsoft it becomes a game right sure and i don't i'm not saying that it, all, it has to be that way and i'm not mm -hmm. saying that you can't get a lot of value out of that stuff and coming from the military side i've seen it both ways mm -hmm. but the most common way that i've seen force on force training done especially when you try to get people into it that don't have a proper basis built in, built up to it. Yeah. Is it becomes like a basis for a lot of arguments about like, I shot you first or like, sure. You know, <laughs> no, right. Or like, yeah. If you, if you don't Rats. have like, if you don't have some like marking round yeah, or something yeah. like that, or even if you do have marking rounds, like the consequences of getting hit in the face with a marking round and the consequences of getting sure. in the face, getting hit in the face with five, five, six, yeah. they don't really equate to one another, right? So you take a lot of chances in training that you wouldn't necessarily take mm -hmm. outside of a training environment. And so like as much as I love to get into all of that stuff and offer people the chance to experience it, for lack of a better term, in a lot of ways, it just it does just end up devolving into like an experiential thing yeah as opposed to like a training thing where you develop real skills that you can then repeat over and over sure. to like actually right and i'll give you another like really good example because like a lot of people like to get into like the vehicle tactic classes they look really mm -hmm. sexy and Looks cool fun. and there's a lot of shooting shoot going on window. we're moving right. i want to shoot through the windshield and i want to do all the choreograph little things and mm -hmm. shoot behind my buddy's head and do whatever, the gram, right? You know, yeah. Do it for the gram, right? Yeah. Rule number one, got to look cool and all of this. <laughs> but the problem becomes like, I'm not going to sit in my fucking car while it's absorbing bullets and just hope that I don't get hit, right? I'm going to try and make myself small and I'm going to try and get out of the car over trying to return fire, right? Because if I try to return fire from sitting here, then all I'm going to do oh, is die away. right here. Or if I, if I can drive away, then I'm going to use the car as a weapon and drive away, right? That's yeah. the other. But if I'm in a situation where the car is disabled or I can't, right, I can't leverage the car to mm -hmm. make an escape from where I, where I am, then I have to escape on foot, right? But what I can't do is just try and sit here and poke a hole through the windshield because that's expending ammunition, right? Like while you're shooting through the windshield, what people don't tell you is you're not actually accomplishing anything. But it looks cool. It looks so neat. Like my hat that Todd Chanel just complimented. <laughs> Call me broke back, Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> Todd's the man. And Mike, I, I, Mike, I read your, I got your question here. We're going to get to that. Don't worry. I love Todd. He's amazing. That was a great comment. You win the <laughs> internet, buddy. Good job. But no, you see what I'm saying, though? I like, wish I could quit you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you see what I'm saying? Like, it becomes so. It becomes so difficult to like keep the training going on sure. the proper trajectory sure. to actually get what you came for, which is like repeatable skill that mm -hmm. you can something that you've actually developed into a skill that you can then repeat and and with a reasonable guarantee of success or a reasonable understanding of how it's gonna work, right? Yeah. But the problem with like trying to fight your way out of that front seat like people like to do is so much of it depends on just the luck of not getting hit by bullets while you're sitting. Sure. So much of it just depends on like the the idea that parts of that car actually will stop bullets, even though most of that car is not going to do a mm -hmm. thing to help. You. Right. Right. And if you've ever actually shot at a car or mm -hmm. or seen what bullets do to cars or what they don't do to cars, right, in like real right. cars, right, then you kind of understand how it goes. Was there some sort uh, of sorry? So Mike asked what we're going to start filling the retail space with when we have you know a store again that's not 700 square feet yeah so what do you think i mean i for one like to hear what a lot of people might want to have in there uh, we've got a lot of good ideas we have a lot of stuff 
not on the back burner. It's just people are waiting. What was that from the audience? Did you hear? No snowshoes. Ah, I thought you said only snowshoes. He said so many snowshoes. So the many great snowshoes. thing about the snowshoes is we had to get an extra Second shipping container. Floor. Yeah. Just for that, <laughs> LLB <laughs> sponsored a shipping container for us. <laughs> Not just the duck boots. Fuck we off. also get the duck boots. <laughs> <laughs> when the day after tomorrow happens, we will all sink into the quicksand snow. Yeah. Quicksand snow? Yeah. Quick snow? <laughs> snow sand. But yeah, we uh, we were we were busting at the seams in the old store. For as like for retail yep. space, we just needed more of it. I knew we needed more of it, and we had that conversation. I brought the team together right after the fire, uh, and it's like, all right, here's rough idea of you know the amount of money we're going to have to work with. So we know what the previous store like took to do. We could do that and have X amount left over, and maybe we dial up. You know, we get nicer fixtures and furniture and just really, you know, maybe we put in the $200,000 for the fancy target retrievers and we make the range like super fancy as far as that stuff goes. Or do we kind of go all in on the building itself and make it as big of a facility? You know, so it was like, what what option are we going to do? And I think as a team, we all decided we need the sweet room more than fanciness. We just need more room people will put up with you know if you build it they will come <laughs> yeah so i think the old store we had 2000 maybe like 2500 square feet of mm -hmm. retail which that's what we'll have on the first floor again um and then we're going to have about that same amount 2000 square feet on the second floor for retail i keep so, joking with customers saying that we're so good and making it work inside there that when you guys come <laughs> to the new store it's going to be an island yeah of all the stuff <laughs> and just wasted space because we're not going to know uh, what to do with all that space for real it's all going to be snowshoes as a matter of fact we're going to have snowshoe yeah. simulator with <laughs> you know, that's test. great that's great go do that. is that there's got to be one have you seen you, the virtual simulator thing you guys, have, you guys might not have ever been there but Every year in Bristol, shout out to Bristol. I know you're watching. Um, at the, <laughs> the mountain, they have they have um, they have a little winter like fest that they do, and they because they can simulate snow every now and again. They have a little simulation center <laughs> where people come, and there's a little there's an actual snowshoe. I want to say it's from the people that we spoke to when we were at the Genesis Country Museum, the outdoor store. Ooh, okay, yeah, yeah. They had like yeah. snowshoe. It was like that's a, cool. A silly, yeah. but they did like a, what Bristol would look like if you were stories tall. That's you fun. Could like walk around yeah, yeah, yeah. in this little scaled down version, but that's maybe fun. the quicksand was not a bad idea. <laughs> just all white. Anthony likes my hat. So, Roger? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. well, so polite. Uh, John asked how we're going to handle ammo as far as selling it goes. So, you know, same way we're doing now, basically. Yeah. You know, if you're, it's gonna be locked up. It's gonna kind of be 2006 Kmart video game style. Yeah, kind of sucks. Unfortunately, kind of yeah. sucks. Oh, that's what we should do. We really need we to talk. Get that hooked up so all the kids can break the. We gotta, the video games. <laughs> we gotta get. Uh, we gotta get together and just make a plan of attack on some of these laws, like how Brett did. If yep. you missed last week's live stream. Great. Go back, yeah. watch that interview with Brad. It, it, yeah, it was awesome. It. Yeah. Uh, we basically all need to grow a pair like Brett and just step up. Right. So, yeah. What a message that speaks. Of, yeah. Yeah. Like, and like, I don't want to, like, I'm not trying to insult him, but like, he's, he's nobody. Like, he's just a normal dude. Like, works a normal job. He's Where not some. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he's just a blue-collar guy like anybody else. Like, and he was like, no, I'm fucking sick of this. And he sent some emails. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, he's got a court case with his name on it against the state that, like, benefited all of us. Right. I don't know if you heard, but before this lawsuit, because of the Concealed Carry Improvement Act, when you went to a business, when you went to a property, when you went anywhere that you didn't own, if you didn't have permission from the owner or if there was not a sign posted saying you are allowed to carry here, 
you could not carry there. Tell me if you've ever seen one of those at any shopping plaza anywhere. So no shopping plaza, any strip mall, the owner of the strip mall, none of those businesses, every one of those businesses could allow you to carry in them. But the owner of the strip mall never said it was okay. So in theory, this is according to the state police that I've had conversations with. You pull into that parking lot, you have broken the law because you don't have permission. It's not posted that you're allowed to park there. Now that's gone away thanks to this lawsuit, thanks to Brett, thanks to people like him stepping up, thanks to people like you that joined FPC because that's who did it. And Gina right? Way and yep. all those yep. other yeah. – so, People you uh, think are little are not actually as little as you thought they are. Yeah, just... you, you might not be able to – you know, or you might not have standing, like we talked about in last week's live stream. You might not have a case against New York, but you can help those that do. You right. can join these groups. Yeah, you can spend what, twenty bucks a year. Oh, dude, it's so it's, it's worth it. Yeah, it's so it's, worth it. It's so think, worth think it. about. Do you really need to watch that episode of Bob's Burgers on Hulu, or can you right. take that monthly payment right. and put it towards something worthwhile? You can watch it on YouTube. Get a second job. You can do both. I'm not listening to ads on Spotify. Yeah, I'm like Spotify. <laughs> Hi Joe. And, and I don't I don't know that reference. Who's Father Sarducci? Sarducci. Sarducci? Guido Sarducci? No, no, Father Guido. He's, he's making fun of my hat. So I won't have no, I won't. That's not that's <laughs> a, that's a compliment. Okay. Joe says that we're getting lazy because we're sitting down. Joe Charzo. So listen here, buddy. Listen here. Listen getting here. lazy or getting listen, old. This is getting smarter. Okay. I'm getting smart. I'm old. <laughs> it's those knees. Yeah, wow. why are you gotta make fun? Yeah, I didn't get one of those comfort mats. Yeah, it hell? does hurt. I don't want to complain. <laughs> sound like a bitch, but like it does hurt. Like because you gotta stand in one spot. Like you can't move. So my sciatic. Like, this is not an ergonomic workplace. <laughs> Listen, I want my SAG union card. <laughs> oh, I got some SAG. <laughs> <laughs> I got some SAG. Oh my gosh. What's your favorite knife? We got, we got your pocket right now. You got a knife? Yeah, of course. Terzo would appreciate it. That's why I asked. Yeah, Terzo, what do you got, Kershaw? This is actually oh, we. This is actually fun. a Terzo. <laughs> this is actually a Terzo gift. This is actually a gift from Joe Terzo. Wow, cool. I've never gotten a knife from him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So proud of your phone. Yes, Bring yes. it. I had to buy this knife like an idiot. Favorite knife is the one that you carry every day. <laughs> Yeah, the best text. Is this a swordfish? I don't even know. Yeah. 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 What is it? That's, just, that's a dope. Is there a saying that, like, the best knife is the one that you can keep an edge with? That makes sense. I mean, I don't know if that oh. is. I've never heard it, but it makes sense. It's copyright. Tatro 2023. So speaking of, the, I like this knife. I actually sharpened this knife on the bottom of a coffee cup today. Sweet. That's a cool little, 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 little that's a, strop action with some ceramic. Yeah. I always liked the top of the window of like a car. Uh -huh. That's an interesting. That is a cool. I've seen that mm -hmm. method done before. Mm -hmm. I have broken so many people's windows. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, honey. Uh, so another shameless plug. We've got a class coming up on January. Oh, it's like caustic. Actually, remember what I was talking about? You know what? That's what happened. When I was talking about the gasoline cup. Because it's not a hot liquid. This was it was a cold beverage. Because no, it's a pick me up. It's because fireball <laughs> eats right through that. Yeah. Uh, we got a class coming up on January twenty eighth. Yeah. Big class. And 20, the big class. Is it twenty eighth and twenty ninth? Just, just the twenty eighth. Right? Yeah, just the twenty eighth. So we rented out the Kodak Center. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it kind of started like a lot of our projects. As just like uh, can like can we do this? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Started, started as with brand hitting the sauce a, a little bit. You know, there's a two a.m. Like you know, it's like Joe knows it's bad when he wakes up and he gets a text from me at like two a.m. Like it's not a booty call. Like hey, you up? I did a but thing. But it's like well, hey, no, he politely asks if I'm up, and I know. <laughs> I have an idea. <laughs> and then he turns into Charlie Day with a cigarette. He's like, oh, <laughs> and I, I literally have a board with string. Red string back here. <laughs> it's I am different. <laughs> it's a bird law. Can we talk about that by Silvio? <laughs> uh, so we rented out the Kodak Center, and they were amazing in like on allowing us to, on to do that. Or, yeah, like, hey, oh, it's so cool. We and like we worked with our friends uh, or our you know, main friend Mitch over at Evolution Marketing. Mm -hmm. We've got billboards all over town. Good shadow. And it has been amazing. We've got like hundreds, literally hundreds of people signed up for this class. How many hundreds? Tens of ones. 
No, no. <laughs> honestly, we're, we are. Is it like over three hundred? Yeah, yeah, we're over three hundred yeah. people right now. Yeah. Um, if if the the graph continues, like we we, we might, might fill hit it a thousand. Or get cool. We might hit a thousand people in that class. But it's a nineteen hundred seat room, though, right? So that's that's pretty good. Yeah. So we got room. We got room. Come on. We want it's you. Free. It's like almost free. So it's essentially free. We're charging the training 15, itself. Is yeah, like, you're not getting charged for that. We're charging fifteen bucks. Honestly, that's to make sure that you show up. That's why we did it. If we knew if we did it free, free, you'd get a so thousand people to say up, yeah. show up, and then nobody would show up. So, uh, you're you're paying for lunch. You're buying lunch. You're gonna get a box lunch, and you're gonna get eight hours of amazing training that counts towards your pistol permit. And I saw, or I sorry, I spoke to a guy today. He called and he goes, "Hey, I've already got my permit." But I saw this class. It sounds like a good idea. Like it's been a long time since I've taken any kind of training, and it'd be perfect for that because mm -hmm. this part of the class goes over all the new laws, all the changes they've made, interacting with law enforcement. Do you tell a cop when you're carrying? Like when they pull you over, that's all covered. In I the don't class. know. You don't have to come to the class. We're not going to tell you. <laughs> Is New York State a duty to inform state? I don't know. Oh, no, but I knows. do know. No, but I won't tell you. <laughs> so. Great class for fifteen dollars. Even if you, you have your pistol permit, honestly, even if you're one of those people that know, like, say your uncle was a cop and you know everything. Right? Oh man, okay, <laughs> you good. are an expert. Love those guys. Uh, actually, it's the ones whose great uncle was a corrections officer. Those are the ones oh, who know. Great uncle. They're Polish. like, Polish. yeah, like it's like them and Navy SEALs, like <laughs> right there. So frog life. If yes. you <laughs> is that all those salt life stickers mean? I see that all over. Do you so, know what that is? That's so just that really like to take our people. damn Kodak class because it's going to be a really fun day. <laughs> just hanging out with the Second Amendment like patriots in well, your area. Let's be like, real. Just going to be a fun. You could be part of a historical event because when was the last time, really, honestly, ever there was anything to do with the firearm at the Kodak Center, other than when George Eastman. Other than. <laughs> <laughs> other than when they had their own shooting range. And, and I, I look. I, I have not still, seen I pictures. Still do have it. I want to see pictures. Someone out there had an uncle that worked there. at Kodak, or worked there themselves. We have a lot of old timers. I mean, I've seen do this. pictures like, where they say it was, and it was like four, yeah. it was four lanes. That was just like, have you? Ever I've been, googled it. There's did nothing you ever out go there. Go to Livingston County, uh, Caledonia, under the thick. I never it's, go there. Okay, that's fine. No. Okay. <laughs> I purposely, okay. I, under the courthouse, you're saying, right? I thought you said I purposely. That. I purposely got around. <laughs> I, I can't avoided go. that place. I cannot go to Livingston County. I have to go around there. Okay. <laughs> no, seriously, 15 bucks. Come down. Um, have some fun. Rafa, fire pin, mm -hmm. collab, sanctioned event. Yep. 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 Shout out to Rafa. If you're not a member of Rafa. I'll be there. Right. John will be there. Yep. It's going to be a lot of fun. And yeah, January 28th, coming up quick. Coming up quick. We've got a whole year's worth of our normal training calendar up also on the website. Yeah, I guess we could say that. So for those mm -hmm. of you that don't know, um, when you – what's that? On the website. Oh, the calendar yeah, part of it? Okay, ah. we'll get on that. But for those of you that, that you may be watching that did sign up for um, said class on the 28th, the second portion, second or third portion where you're actually doing the live fire – you just are going to piggyback off of any of our other classes that we're doing throughout the calendar year. So um, you don't have to worry about one day that is maybe you got to ask out for. You just look at our calendar, or I guess now I got to update it, but look at our online web store where it talks about all of the other classes, and you'll just piggyback off of the second day, which I believe is usually a Sunday. Mm -hmm. And then you just do the live fire portion from there. Uh, so Mark asked, can we discuss good options for home defense? Good. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I love to discuss home defense options. Um, are we like talking about arms, fire? Like, well, yeah. 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 Like, what, what would be a good? So, I mean, I guess it depends. Let's put them into different classifications, right? So I would say if you have a pistol permit, right, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. you may opt for a handgun um, and that would be okay. Personally, if I, if I could have whatever I wanted to have, I would just have an AR. I just have an AR and 556 with like a 14 and a half or a 16 really? inch barrel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because I know that ballistically it's going to do what I want it to do and it's short enough and it's small enough and mm -hmm. it's also long enough and I have two hands to use it and I can, you know what I mean? I can sling it, I can do whatever I want. But if 
I live in New York state and I want to have a long gun, then I may go in the shotgun direction. Some people are really drawn sure. to shotguns. I'm personally not excited about them as much, mm -hmm. but if I were excited about shotguns, I would say probably a semi-automatic, right? Because I don't have to remember to like actually operate sure. the shotgun or worry sure. about whether or not I short stroke the shotgun. I would say preferably 20 gauge, but a 12 gauge would be okay. Um, and I would say something that has uh, the ability to mount a light huge. and a set, yeah. yep. right? Because anything that I'm going to be pointing a gun at, I want to have maximum positive identification. Mm -hmm. And if it's dark, then I want to make it brighter so I can see more of what I have to see. So that if I have to go to court and defend whatever I did or didn't do, sure. I can I can intelligently talk about what I saw and how I saw it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I would say, you know, in the 20 gauge semi-automatic arena, there's only a handful, there's only a small handful, I would say. It's not very big, not very big. So you're probably looking at like a Mossberg, right? Or like a... Yeah, the Mossbergs. If you want to get wild with it, you can go into like the Bermuda's. Caltech KS410. So it's a pump. Yeah, I mean, if Sorry, you're going, I, 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 th that's just a preference, right? If there are people that like pumps, the problem with pumps is if I pump it, I have to pump it all the way open and then all the way closed again. And that's really easy to fuck up. It's just, it is. It's well, I've done it without having to shoot for my life. Right? It's kind of so, like that, like revolvers never jam. And it's like uh, pump action shotgun will never jam, and it's like, well, you 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 can jam. You are it. Your your arrows are yeah. very yeah. easy yeah. to and use short stroke with that, that yeah. right? And let's be like, real: if you don't, if the first round doesn't go off of a revolver, and you go to shoot a second one, and then it's uh, delayed, and it goes off, and now mm -hmm. you look like the chicken man from Breaking Bad. Exactly. <laughs> now you've yeah. just gotten out of battery yeah. detonation, yeah, essentially, right. right? So what is it? Clint Smith said, "Pistol rounds go." Into, make holes in people. Rifles Rifle through, rounds shoot through, through people. people. Shotguns leave a pile of shit on the we'll floor. We'll take a chunk of shit <laughs> off of your body and, <laughs> at the appropriate distance. At the appropriate distance with the appropriate load, right? And I think at those are... At the appropriate are, distance with yeah. the appropriate Sorry, sorry. Load. Yeah, I'd be like the, the, the stoma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, I, but I think all of that, right, all of that has to be said to go along with that, right? Like you need the appropriate distance engagement for the load that you're shooting and you need to understand what the capabilities of the shotgun with the choke, whatever you, you're yeah, working you with and whatever the load and, mm -hmm. and all of that kind of stuff, right? So it's all, there's all limitations. There's limitations around all of this. Um, and with shotguns, the other limitation is ammunition mm -hmm. capacity and ammunition management, right? Mm -hmm. So ideally, that's why I'm more of like a semi-automatic magazine fed rifle type <laughs> of person, because if I have a problem with the magazine, guess what? I can get rid of it and I have a new one and now we're, we're good to go again, right? Because mm -hmm. generally that's going to be the first source of the problem because right. magazines are like expendable items right so which as dumb as they are one of the new york compliant versions like the thornton stock spur grip i think that's the only way to go if you're going to have if you if you want an ar-15 just because of how they look or just to target shoot with it's the most natural no big deal like what you're used but to if, for a traditional if you actually want to use the thing for self-defense you need to have removable mags now, a fixed right. mag AR. 100%. You so, it has, it, so here it would have to be featureless, right? In that yeah. regard. You will have a flashbang every single time you pull the trigger. It's, it's so loud. It's so loud, but it's it's so worth it the, ballistically. The toughest like. thing now, we're talking now within the past year since September of 2020, uh, two, three, whenever we came out, you need a semi automatic rifle permit. Yeah. Right. So, if so you that's have on that not well. done it already, January 28th, you get your pistol you permit. Go. And with that New York State pistol permit, no matter the county, they will automatically, because it's an addendum, onto your pistol permit. Yep. I have not seen, and please someone throw in the comments if they've seen it, where you can just apply for your semi-automatic rifle permit. I Someone told me that they had, but I didn't I, see. I haven't physically yeah. seen, and I've looked on all of the state trooper websites. It doesn't make any account. sense, because it's the same. Yeah, so just get, get your pistol permit. I mean, as much as it's crap, it sucks that we have to say, just get it, but... Yeah. Not a live stream question, but on Discord. What was your preferred AR mag tube folder? Mag tube folder? The, you're talking about the buffer oh, tube. Buffer tube? Oh. Yeah. yeah, so uh, I used the Sylvan one for a short period of time. Sylvan and what? Sylvan Arms? The Sylvan Arms one. And I had an issue with it. Um, namely, it was the um, 
it was the fire or the buffer retaining pin started to rust right away. So I had to replace that. They upgraded that later on, um, but they also had a tendency to get bent. But the Sylvan Arms um, folders, they were nowhere near as durable as the Law Tactical ones. The Law Tactical ones are definitely more durable and more like robust. They do add almost a pound of weight to the buffer tube area of the rifle. Like, I gotta, <laughs> so, I mean, I like, people act like that shit doesn't matter. Adding a lot, almost though. a pound yeah. of a shift in the bat, like the pivot like, point of that rifle. A properly it's like literally 12, 12 ounces right joe for the law yeah. it's it's not insignificant it's, so you it is you got like a seven pound rifle right adding another pound there is That's, one company dude, i'm gonna be 41 That's, years old this year ounces make pounds yeah, pounds dude. make pain like, so we we did have a question uh from mark concerns of wall penetration with rifle rounds you concerned about that at all so there's Fuck actually a lot of there's actually a lot of information out about this and it kind of comes down to velocity, right? That's why I like 14.5 or 16 inch barrels because I want to push a 55. And also we have to qualify what sort of ammunition selection we're talking about because yes, there is more penetration than more penetration uh, likelihood inherent in certain rounds than others, right? If you're talking about like barrier blind rounds, like 64 grain uh, trophy bonded bear claw, right? If I had to shoot through an intermediate barrier like drywall or through windshield glass, I would want to have that extra bit of penetration, right? But if I know that I am running a risk of over penetration, then a 50 grain tap or a 50 grain V Max, right? Hornaday, something that's like designed for varmints and supposed to basically come unglued in a target, right? That's why we have to understand the characteristics of the ammunition that we're using too. Because there is, a one. I mean, you're not wrong. You, I've I've seen a lot of guys dicks in the dirt from M85A1 or from M855, I should say, before A1. Yeah. So I've been really I, turned on to the Fort Scott TUI stuff. Yeah, the tumbles on impact stuff. That stuff is is nasty. Um, another round that I would highly recommend. Would be like the Barnes 50 grain uh, X Tac, right? Because mm -hmm. it's 50 grains, it's going like 3,200 feet per second. They are nasty as far as like uh, expansion, and the expansion actually makes them behave pretty predictably as far as like staying in targets because they slow down in targets, right? Fast. Like if you've ever seen, they open up really a, fast. A crash test dummy and coming in with all that traumatic energy that's being transferred from the car to that you're getting all of that because basically if you can get something that's going to mushroom out a lot it means you're getting that i guess so there's a temporary was, stress like cavity a, like, right and like the, a parachute i guess you're stopping it as much as you can or i guess who, who did it who did a video grantham grantham did, has did done some great through, videos through on drywall. that yeah so oh. you guys but ammunition selection is paramount when <clears throat> whenever we're talking about defensive ammunition right so Know what you're shooting, know what you're shooting it out of. And yes, like shooting freaking M855A1 through a 12 and a half inch barrel in your house is probably asking for problems. Gonna have a bad time. Do you do the thing where, you know how like you have a baseball bat and you put the sock on the end of it? So, so if somebody hit the bad it, guy, right, yeah, and they're just holding the sock. Do you do the same thing with your gun? No. I, oh, I don't. Yeah, I, mean, I yeah. don't because if I did, I wouldn't be able to see my true, dot very So good. legitimately true story about that. <laughs> Growing up, I'm like, I'm, 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 now I'm like little. My dad, you know the old winter that you would like plug in with a battery socks? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's how you would. You know the shotgun in the in the garage. You just keep it it's like it's it's protected because I covered them up. Straight up, just a sock, like the red toe gray. Just and he's obviously changed since then. But vivid, vivid memory. It's holding that's that great. moisture. Right. That's yep. That's right. Not anywhere near a vapor prohibited. And no vapor corrosion inhibition that's whatsoever. That's when I knew that fire of retail life was for me. That's, that's not, when I. That is not the micro environment. That's when I heard the call. Poor, soul, poor souls, like yeah. it's the wrong micro environment yep. for your guns, right? Are you or a loved one exhibiting flood behavior? <laughs> <laughs> every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. 
but yeah, keep those questions coming, guys, because I really do like them. And Mark, thank you for your excellent questions about uh, ammunition selection. But yeah, I would say that like just in general, like understand what your ammunition is designed to do, um, especially for like your handguns. How many times we've we seen somebody come in here carrying ball ammo, right? Yeah. Uh, in their carry gun, uh, yeah, which I would say, you know, creates the potential for some penetration type issues, right? Um, John asks, what do you think about buckshot? What do I think about it? Uh, for inside of your house, I think that it's probably a, a semi-useful tool, John, but I think uh, judicious marksmanship and understanding your pattern sizes at different ranges is important. Um, I'll give you a for instance, because I always talk about like just what I know from my own house and my own experiences. Um, when I look at my house, the longest shot that I might have to make inside of my house is like between 17 and 18 yards, right? So if I know that there is a, a non-zero chance that I might have to shoot something that's 18 yards away, um, I want to know exactly where all nine of those shotgun pellets are going to end up, um, like as far as pattern size goes. And like how much aiming do I need to, because I think one of the things that scares me about shotguns in general is there's this conception out there among a certain subset of the population that if I am using a shotgun, I don't necessarily need to aim mm -hmm. or that like judicious marksmanship somehow becomes like less of a thing. Well, the video games it fans out. I mean, that's yeah. very true in real life, too. But the problem with that is, like, how much fanning is it actually doing? And One inch per yard is, like, the rule of thumb. Right. So Without fucking with your chokes. It's a big thumb. So if rule we, if we <laughs> know that, like, just in general, right, if I'm 18 yards away from a target, I have yeah. an 18-inch potential spread. Yep. Well, if I'm half on my target and half on my target, let's say that I'm shooting at a target that's roughly 18 inches wide because that's yeah. – the width of like an Ipsic silhouette, right? And yeah. that's analogous to my shoulders, right? So if I'm shooting at a target that's 18 inches wide, if I half on and half off, let's say that I'm shooting nine round buckshot and I got five of nine on the target. What happened to those other four 30 caliber, 32 mm -hmm. caliber projectiles mm -hmm. that I just sent into my home, right? Where did, where did those go? And what not is going to stop them on the backside? Not that one of those pellets couldn't stop the threat. You know, I mean, people have been killed by 22 caliber, 100%. right? Whatever. But now you've gone from this like super weapon that, yeah, would clip, like, takes holes and fucking puts the shit on the ground, right? Like, <laughs> so now, but now you've missed with half of those rounds. Now, half 30 of that of stuff is, right. is not. So now you, you know, helping. yes, you're getting rounds on target, but. So it's it's all the, it all depends on you and how much effort you're willing to put into becoming an asset to yourself and to other people as opposed to being a liability, right? And how how well do you know your equipment? How well do you understand what it's going to do? And how well do you understand what you're going to be able to do, like right now? Because I think that's the other biggest problem is like everybody assumes that because they go to the firing pin once a month and they get their mm -hmm. practice session in when the sun is shining and they had their coffee and mm -hmm. right like they had a chance to do not all bleeding. of the right they're yeah. not bleeding right nobody's in danger nobody's shooting at them yeah. right because they they can accomplish all of these great things on a flat range when all the odds are working in their favor i think it gives them a false sense of security about like what an actual gunfight is like so, right so we were joking some of the guys were joking that we're gonna build this like we're gonna have this space for like a shoot house right so, like, the final evolution of training will, you know, there's going to be, like, a bedroom, right? So, you're going to spend the night, like, at the firing pin, and you'll have, like, a simunitions gun, you know, however you'd have it, and just, like, you're going to spend the night, and at some rant, you won't know when, but, just like, waves of three in the morning, gonna... yeah, like, Ben is over there just, like, pushing over a lamp, like, to break it, and, like, you've got to, like, wake up. And fully defend yourself. Like, like, get, it's realistic get that sorted out. Yes. They did a, they did a movie. <laughs> That'll go great. That. Insurance company will love that. It's called Monsters Inc. <laughs> if that boy was strapped up, he'd be good to go. <laughs> yeah. So I don't. I don't know. Like your mother definitely warned you about going and falling asleep at a random gun shop. Like, <laughs> don't go. I never had that talk with my mom. <laughs> Maybe I missed out so, on something when I was so, a kid. So Joe asks, is a twelve gauge round? With a half inch ball bearing and six buckshot rounds, overkill for home defense. They are self defense multi threat rounds. 
So I do think that plays into I don't I can't think of who would make that ammo. Like that's not something from federal. Well, the, but, what if the we thing talk is about, um, the Winchester Defender ammo, which is that the split shot. I love dude the PDX that, one was that's, amazing. That stuff's that awesome because about? yeah, because then you have all that kinetic energy that is stopping in said talk. Hopefully you're hitting your where you're aiming. I would, yeah, I, don't, I would love to know the actual brand because I I very much just like gimmick ammo. And that's yeah. what, like you were talking about like yeah. your your ammunition selection. What's actually going to happen to that ball bearing is my question. Like, have you have you tried it? Have you actually like tested the ammunition to see, you know, in some some sort of a medium that's going to like simulate what you're actually asking it to do? Because I don't know what it's supposed to do. I, I mean, I know in theory it's supposed to make a big nasty hole. Okay, got it. Um, but through what? Right. And like, how much of a big? I, I don't know. I have more this, questions. This isn't a blunderbuss back in the 1800s. Yeah, so I don't like. Just it put doesn't spoons sound, and forks in there. Doesn't like, sound like something I would like, use necessarily. I could see that as a breaching application. And well, the steel makes me because what we used to use for breaching was ceramic. Ceramic, ceramic slugs. Tungsten, tungsten too, right? Yeah, there's tungsten that exists. That's a tungsten powder. Yeah. So it's it's like it's almost like the frangible shit. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, but the ceramic was really good because you could shoot it at like a steel like door hinge or whatever, and it would expend all of its energy right there on the hinge and basically act like a hammer, but it would come yeah. totally yeah, unglued. Just, it's pretty cool. Right. So there was no like risk of secondary fragmentation and shit. So yeah, you, you're always trying to mitigate, right? Cause it's a life preservation exercise, right? Ultimately, like whatever I'm, whatever I'm doing with a gun, it's always about life like pres preserving innocent life right so ultimately mm -hmm. if i'm doing something that makes it more likely that somebody is going to get killed like exit in an ex some sort of exigent circumstances I, that's not what i want to do uh mike asks every time this topic comes or says every time this topic comes up i imagine actually doing this like self-defense in his house and he just like he can't hear anymore like and that's that's a real no, issue. That, that's very, Mike, Mike I'm right. so glad that you bring that up, man, because like ultimately that's, I think, a big, a big realization that people need to come to is like what you're, what we're talking about here is not something that we want to like be glorifying or mm -hmm. it's not something that we want to mm -hmm. be like uh, valorizing or anything like that, right? Ultimately what we're talking about is like, again, the preservation of innocent human life, right? So sometimes... In order to do that, you have to use lethal force. And if you do, then you have to be very judicious and you have to be able to defend, you know, whatever actions you took in court, obviously. And you have to be following the five laws, five rules that govern the use of deadly force and all of that stuff. And you have to understand how those rules are all or nothing proposition. Right? Mm -hmm. Like ultimately, either I acted within the five rules of self-defense or I acted outside of the rules. And if at any time I act outside of the rules, then I'm liable for for a criminal offense at that point, not just you know some sort of uh, unfortunate tragedy. Right. So we need to does we need to accept the does open us reality up for a good argument in suppressors, silencers, Ooh. some of that. Because... Right. Well, I, yeah, I think in terms of the house, right? When we talk about five, five, six in the house, like. I always would you, am an advocate. If you could, would you suppress for a home defense? One hundred percent. Just for just for yeah. hearing preservation. Of, yeah. Just for yeah. hearing preservation of everybody in the house. Yeah. Um, it's some people make the argument of like I don't want my neighbors to hear. No, you you do want your neighbors to hear because ultimately, yeah. like you're a good guy and you're acting righteously. And if you're sure, if you're acting righteously, then you want yeah. help to get there sooner because the more help comes your way, the better off you're going to be. Right. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, like. You're already in a legal right. Conundrum. It's already going to happen, right? You, so okay. you don't you don't want to prolong that, right? And you don't want to prolong the amount of time that have, that that is unaccounted for, or that you have to account for sure. your own actions, and sure. there's nobody there to justify or validate whatever you, you're doing, right? So I think you that, ate like four sandwiches and then called nine one one. Well, I was very <laughs> hungry, and they were already made. So... No, but you know what I'm saying? Like you have to. You have to really knock ah! a bunch of shit over there. Oh, way to go. You have to really just throw ah! stuff all over the floor. God. This is why we need training. Holy shit. Now it smells like beer. Now it smells a lot like beer. Ah. All over the 
pants and the floor, guys. Dang. Way to go. So God. you can see how unexpected circumstances can arise at any time. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, I so wanted to set the stream last week because I had a couple, two, three beers. Have you seen that video of the gentleman with Down syndrome? They give him two. I've seen. Got, he's got two beers yeah. and he's like, gets into the pool. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he goes, Woo! He smashes the yeah. beers together and then he drinks one of them. Yeah. And everyone's like, What the fuck? Like, get out of the pool. Such a nightmare scenario, like broken glass, like in I the pool. I can't help but feel like that. Oh my before. god. That's so great. <laughs> so Joe <laughs> he's going back to gonna his, keep chugging He's along. going back to the um the half inch ball bearing with the six buck shot rounds. He shot it at a fridge and it left a hole large enough to fit two fists through. I don't know, like this. <laughs> All know, right, Joe. I mean, hey man, it's been tested. If it's Joe approved, have hey at man. it, man. Like, I get attacked by fridges all the time. I have never. Or wait, I have never is been. Is that a fat joke? I just fat joke myself. No, you're doing just fine. I attack the fridge all the time. <laughs> I, 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 you attack. I've never been on the receiving end of an appliance <laughs> assault. I guess but. all I can say to that is, are people coming at you with medieval armor? And if yeah. they are refrigerators, yes, yes. like refrigerator, yeah. People, do, people are not made out of refrigerator like plates. This. Level whatever plates they do pretty well against shotguns because it's so slow. Like, level four plates will stop shotguns. Shotgun 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 but it will transfer a tremendous. Think of the the yeah. It was. Let's go look at. It. It was, is, it, is that what it is? Arm two. Mister printed out. I, no, sorry, I didn't know where shotguns fell. They don't get rated at all. No, they don't. I'm just saying, like with the new level, because there's the body armor leveling is now no no longer level three, four, yeah. four A. Because I mean, again, double O buck. It's basically thirty eight special hitting you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just yeah, eight of just, them. It's like nine, thirty five. Thirty eight. Thirty eight caliber, 38 special. Or like nine mil yeah. can't defeat the best. So historically, so, yeah. historically, everything that forty four mag that would defeat forty four mag, they always made the claim that it would also defeat a full gauge slot. Okay. So I, would, oh, I think like just that's just a velocity just kill, disparity. Kill, yeah. Just kill me instead. Of All of my ribs are twelve good. gauge slug. Just because hey. remember it's velocity that really is defeating yeah. the armor, right? Ultimately. Uh, so he he doesn't know what they are. He picked them up with Cabela's. All right, hey man, rock on. I'm not I'm not shitting on you for it. Uh, yeah, man. Or do the um the split shot where people cut just around the where a cut shell. Yeah, cut yeah, shell. yeah. My issue with shotguns. Is like follow up shot. It's just it's too much. I, I, that's why I'm glad you said 20 gauge, because a lot of people have it in their head that a 12 gauge is more powerful than a 20 gauge. They have the same amount of power. Essentially, yeah. the I should say the the rounds impacting you have the same, same amount, amount of, of power. Right. Yes, there's just less of them right. in a 20 gauge. Whatever the amount so you're is, a lot more velocity out of a 20 gauge. So like yeah. a 20 gauge. Kicks you less because there's less mass going out the other end, but the mass going out is the same velocity as the you know. So like, I don't know. That's my issue with the shotgun is recoil is a real thing. Recoil, right? and you yeah, can, that's one of the yeah. reasons that I'm a big advocate for semi-auto shotguns in general because mm -hmm. most of the older semi-auto shotguns, like your Remington 1100s, 1187s, and stuff, they're all recoil-operated guns, right? So you're using some of that recoil to actually cycle the shotgun. At that Right? Mm -hmm. So it's helping you with the management of the recoils. But with a 20 gauge, there's obviously a little bit less recoil. And in general, like you can find like one of the favorite house guns that I had before I really got away from shotguns totally was a Mossberg 500 20 gauge. Sure. And I, I liked it because I figured, well, April could use it or mm -hmm. one of the kids could use it because they're a little mm -hmm. bit smaller. Now, you know, kids are obviously quite a bit bigger than me, so not really an issue anymore. Are jacked, dude. My kids are big, bro. Yeah, I get. How do you control them? I don't. I don't. <laughs> I, I don't. They control me. I do. Yeah, it's over. My reign of terror. Dad, take me to baseball. Huh? <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry. It's on Bryce Green for what? <laughs> uh, they're, they're good boys. <laughs> That's funny. Jim McGee says Browning A5. Enough said. Yeah. Just no, I, see, for somebody like Jim, I would say that that's... Bonnie and Clyde whip it Model 11. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah but see, like, Jim has, like, a core level of competency, right? That, like, if he was going to use that shotgun to defend himself, 
then he would be able to like do it right and like the ammunition management and the recoil management and the the follow-up shooting and the, the actual aiming of the shotgun like all of that stuff would actually not be an issue in that case right so that's a use case where i'd be like yeah whatever you want to use i would say right like you're going to be a better judge of that than i would sure right? at, at yeah, that yeah. point but like there's another end of the spectrum where people come to us for advice and it's because they're like in a they're not in the deep end of the pool mm -hmm. right right so like if you're in the deep end of the pool and you want to like pick your own stuff then probably you you know you can you at least have enough access to information that you can get it sorted out for yourself mm -hmm. but if you come to us and you ask for advice then you know a lot of times i'm going to try to steer you more towards stuff that i think is better for you know your specific use case do you know what mike's talking about over there are you looking into that he's talking about sons of liberty sons came he's out talking about six max yeah do you know what that is i know that the sons of liberty guys just came out with a new uh it's basically for it the is small, shot time. yeah. It's it's, it's for the AR-15, so for the small frame AR oh. pattern rifles, right? It's basically just to maximize the the capability. So it's it's even more than a six. Well, I like Sons of Liberty. Like those guys are putting out some really good shit right now. I've been seeing some of the the groupings they're getting from their new uh, their new high end barrels. Yeah, and they're shooting like fifty. 50 round groups that like you could cover with your thumbnail essentially. It's pretty yeah. impressive. Yeah, no, they're, they're stuff. That'd be is... cool to see more of. You know, you do a three shot group. Yeah, you're getting this MOA, but you show me a 50 shot group. As I like that. Yeah. Because like, right. you do three shot groups, you could do 10 three shot groups and pick the best one. Well, they, you know have, a, I mean? like, they have a cool podcast as well. And I, I obviously want you guys to listen to our podcast first. Mm -hmm. But if you're interested in getting like way in the weeds and some of those things, those guys talk a lot about like they had a, a podcast specifically where they were going in depth on like, well, how do you know if you have a one minute of angle rifle? And it's like, well, you can say like my rifle will shoot one minute of angle groups on a with a specific, you know, round mm -hmm. once in a while. Right. Or maybe, you know, that off a bench, you can you can squeeze some one inch groups out of your gun here and there. Yeah. But like when they say one inch group or when they say like a one minute gun, mm -hmm. they're saying like, yeah, it's one minute at a hundred with a five round group at least. And that's like an average of 18 or 36, five round group. Like they're getting into like actual data to back it up. They're not saying like, I have a group, mm -hmm. right? You know how they say like the, uh, the plural of, of um, anecdote is data, right? So, for them, it's like, yeah, yeah, your one round, your one group is like an anecdote, but they have a plurality of anecdotes that adds up to actual yeah. data. That they From a firearms manufacturer, you want to hear that. Oh, yeah. Because so it's all about repeatability, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So, yeah. Everything that we're doing from like a machining perspective, right? If you're in the manufacturing side, everything you're doing yeah. from a shooting perspective, everything in ammunition, right? It's all about repeatability, right? Mm -hmm. And everything that we preach on the training side is all about what can you do right now, right? Not what can you do like once in a while. It's like, what can you do repeatably, predictably every single time? I'll knock that beer over. Every time. <laughs> you will knock that beer and it will smell like yingling. <laughs> oh, man. We're, we're not going to get our security deposit back from Averti. They hate us already. It's all right. It's all right. Um, we got next, it's, It'll be fine. Next week. Stream the only reason I wore this hat tonight, uh, Nashville. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> oh, what? Uh, we are going to our one of our great distributors, Big Rock. Right. We are going to Nashville. So, we being Joe and Tyler and I are heading down there. So, yeah, next week, probably just going to do a live stream from down there, yeah. right? Quick, quick little snippet. Up Which on be phones. hammered on fucking Broadway. Yes. Like <laughs> That's the live stream that people want to see. Oh my god. That's the live stream I want to see. Ah, you, guys Jason just, ah. you guys just being blasted <laughs> out in public. Uh na <laughs> yeah, no, na Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah, we'll be in the actual Henrietta. Yeah, we'll yeah, that's, what, that's what my guess. <laughs> We're gonna do a meeting greet. We're gonna be yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh my gosh. That's great. Sweet. Uh, is there anything else? Um, I, I flies, man. It's like 
So uh, first line defense LLC, I did want to say uh, we're going to have some open enrollment classes coming nice. out. We got stuff on the calendar from like April until November of next year. I haven't started publishing any dates yet, um, frankly, because I'm having issue with payments um, because of Stripe. It's bullshit. Whole, yeah. Like yeah, payment it's bullshit. processing. Bank you know, Yeah, they don't want to. Well, I want to be able to get people like pre-registered and she, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, I don't know. So we got to get some bugs to cash. Just mail me money with your name <laughs> and a date on there that you want to go to a class. We'll set it up. No. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll get them. We'll get them on the calendar pretty soon. Get a way for you guys to get uh, pre-registered and everything. But um, yeah, also training department here at the firing pin. Hit us up. Uh, you know, if you want any one-on-one -on -one stuff, myself or John. Will be uh, answering uh, your training requests. Um, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna be around a lot more. So, Hell yeah! If you guys need anything, hit us up. Sounds good. You got anything? No, because you're good. Happy New cool. Year, everybody. Yeah. See you next year. <laughs> <laughs>